Welcome to this presentation of LS Vision Meshroom, an open source 3D reconstruction pipeline. My name is Carsten Rewatz, and I present on behalf of the co-authors, Simone Gasparini, Lilian Carré, and Pierre Godios from the University of Toulouse, and Fabien Castan, Benoit Mourjean, Jan Lantoli, and Grégoire Delillo from Micros, part of Technicolor. Why do we bring a 3D reconstruction pipeline to analysis? High quality re 3D reconstruction is not a real time process today, but can be used in research. For example, to create content such as VR, AR, and XR scenes, panorama views, or point clouds for an object or scene. You can also use Meshroom to extract camera motion paths from a data set. If you're interested in computer vision algorithms or tuning them, it is also an experimental platform to conduct research on performance improvements, for example, on parallel and disputed processing, camera tracking, meshing, and texturing. Or it can be used to, for the verification of research. Meshroom can be used to create ground truth, such as exact camera poses, coarse or dense 3D meshes, or to verify the quality of depth estimation algorithms. And if you're interested in comparing several algorithms for a specific computer vision task in a larger context, you can plug the new development into a complete pipeline and compare it as part of an entire system. In the talk, we are first looking at LS Vision's Meshroom interface and see how a 3D reconstruction pipeline is used. We are very briefly talking about the technology stack before looking more closely at Meshroom's nodal system, which allows the creation of many other patterns. This is how Meshroom greets you when it is started. The interface of Meshroom is made up of two main parts, the upper part with the high-level UI and the lower part with the nodal system that comprises the node graph and the parameter editor. For simple usage, the high-level UI is entirely sufficient. You just drag and drop your input images on the left-hand side, and you have a 2D visualization of your images in the middle part. All you have to do is launch the computation with the start button on the top. When the computation is finished, you can see the generated and textured 3D model on the right-hand side. You can also switch the texturing off to take a closer look at the dense mesh of the generated 3D model. If you have access to render form, you can use the submit button at the top to dispatch the computation on several machines. To do that, you must probably adopt the Python code for submitting to your render form and mesh. A simple example for submitting to Pixar Structure is included in the repository. Here's now a video to make a quick overview of Meshroom. We show the first part of the pipeline in real-time speed, and I'll have to talk rather quickly to keep up. For the second part of the pipeline, the video playback itself is accelerated. The second half performs the depth map stage, which computes the dense point load, which is rather time-consuming. As before, we just drag and drop the images into the top left panel. We can examine the images in the top middle panel. The first thing to do is to save the project as all intermediate data will be stored in the directory that you choose here. And then we start the computation by pressing start. We can see the progression of computation in the graph and see the status of each node. When the sparse reconstruction is done, we can see the sparse point cloud on the right, as well as the calibrated cameras in relation to each other and to the point cloud. Clicking on the input images, we can see the point cloud from the viewpoint of the image's camera on the right. We have to wait a bit for the original image in the center view. We can visually check alignment when we have both. We can also look at the point cloud's points in the input images. Blue is the original pixel. Red is the reproduction of the point cloud. For details of differences, we can zoom in. Orange points matched with other images, but have not been generating a 3D point. In the meantime, the dense part of the pipeline has been processing, but in accelerated time. And now we can see the, our final 3D textured model. So that is all you need to generate your own scans. Now regarding the technical aspects, Meshroom is the graphical user interface written in Python and QML. LS Vision is the core computer vision framework that does the processing in C++ and CUDA. And there are also several C++ plugins to load and store data in standard file formats. You rely as much as possible on standard open source file formats. In the latest release, you must still extract the point clouds from the .obj or .pli files that are written for both the sparse and dense point clouds. But libasymp is already in development branches and GLTF support for point clouds is coming, coming very soon. Now we take a look at the node graphs. 
The node graphs are essentially directed to acyclic graphs of eggs, and they express the dependencies between steps. The node graphs consist of nodes, where each node represents one tool from LS Vision Framework, including its parameters. So it means that each tool can appear several times in the pipeline. And we have edges, which represents file and files and folders. And then edge links one node's output port to one or more node's input ports. The node graph as a dependency graph is quite different from the usual stream handler or component designs that we know from multimedia, because these are not real-time pipelines. They express processing dependencies and part of the pipelines are rather far from real-time. An upstream node may have changes to its content or to its parameters. And if that happens, then the downstream nodes as being dependent on the upstream node will automatically perform recomputation and cache the results. There are special nodes that can consume content incrementally, but those are not the default of the idea. New branches can be added under ways without recomp recomputation of the old graph. Let's take a slightly closer look at the nodal system. <clears throat> the parameter view is the default view when you click on a node. You click on a node and it opens the current parameter for the node and the view exposes the source and the sync file names, as well as parameters that have a strong influence on quality and speed. You can change the parameters right here, and that will lead to recomputation. As an interesting detail, changing one of these parameters creates a new computation and a new recomputation of everything downstream. But when you change the parameter back, the cached output for the parameter is still there, and it doesn't have to be recomputed again. Now at the bottom, we can choose a tab, for example, um, for the command line. For example, we can see this here is a command line string for the node, for, for the depth of the node. And this command line string is really good for doing debugging of the tool itself from the command line without recomputing everything that we have in Meshul, because the files are just visible in the command line as they are in the cache. And we can use this for debugging or for exploring additional parameters that are not in the GUI because they have according to our current knowledge, sensible defaults for well-known scenarios. Now we want to show you um, examples for advanced use of the graph editor. In this video, we, are wanting, we want to reduce the size of the mesh. So we create two mesh decimate nodes, the first one halving the mesh points, the second one reducing the number of mesh points to 10% by changing the parameters. And we are now going to see how well we have managed to reduce the mesh points. First, we take a look at the original, then we zoom in, see that it's getting less and less dense, then we duplicate the texturing output, connect it to the new 10% meshing instead of the original, and we see that it gives a good output with a much less dense network. As you've seen, all the computation is a completely automated process and very simple to use. In order to make experiments, you can duplicate at any stage of the pipeline, not only at the end. In that case, you have the option of duplicating either a single node, or you can du duplicate the entire DAG downstream from the duplication point. It is ideal for running the same pipeline with different settings and compare the results. Here we see an example of what happens when you take the duplicate models from here downstream towards everything from the structure of a motion pipeline. The nodal system can also help us to bypass the slower stage of the entire 3D reconstruction process. The slowest point is the depth map stage. One may only need a rough preview or um, one may not be able to compute the depth map stage because that one does absolutely require CUDA. And it's the only stage in the entire mesh room that requires CUDA absolutely. Bypassing it gives you reconstruction even though your setup, your computer may not have it. For demonstration, we have used the classical Buddha data set, and you see the difference in quality by using the full pipeline above versus the shortened pipeline that bypasses you at the bottom. You can see how the um, DAG has become way shorter. We take outputs from the earlier stages and just bypass the mesh and go straight to filtering using just the sparse point cloud instead of the dense one. At any point of time, you can actually uh, decide to add new images into Meshroom just by dragging them into the first stage. 
but that will usually mean that everything downstream from there is recomputed because our original camera init node doesn't have any understanding of um, caching the point extraction and the SFM computation from individual images. In order to do that, to fix it for you so that a lot of redundant computations don't have to be done again, the pull, the drag and drop operation will give you the option to um, create a new branch of the pipeline. So when part of the computation is already done in the original pipeline, you will get the option to enhance the pipeline instead. If you choose to do that, the graph is updated in the way you see here. The old reconstruction and its results remain untouched at the bottom up to the SFM stage, the structure from motion stage that gives you the sparse point cloud. The bottom pipeline is then generated and executes with the new images. The new um, image matching multi SFM is going to merge the original uh, computation with the new matches that you found and recompute it downstream. And you can, of course, also use this method to use more than one feature extractor in the pipeline. For example, you can do the original computation with SIFT and then enhance it with a different matcher like ARCAS. Finally, a quick look at the second default pipeline, the HDR360 panorama pipeline. We take input images from a 360 camera rig individually. We have pictures that are taken from the same camera with different exposures, and we have different cameras, camera rotations that are covering the entire scene, but from a single point of view in space, or from a pretty much identical location in space. Then, we can go through the following main steps. First, we have the ALDR to HDR fusions, fusion step that combines the different densities for each camera position into a single HDR image. As a second step, we have the estimation of the internal and external parameters of the cameras. And third, the warping and stitching of the different images. After step one, you can visualize the HDR images as you can see in the second image here. After step two, you can see the alignment of the individual cameras of the individual HDR cameras around the nodal point. And at the end of step three, you can see your final 360 panorama image. Wrapping up, we want to clarify that LS Vision Meshroom and all tools in the distribution are um, Mozilla Public License version two or compliant license. that can be used without any restriction in research as well as commercially. And it is used for both. And it is continuously developed further and you can also contribute. It provides you with the interactive GUI that you have seen or a command line if you prefer that. And it gives you the freedom to configure and parameterize it freely right from the GUI, even in the middle of a computation and without discarding any intermediate results. So we do invite you to explore the opportunities that LS Vision Mushroom brings you. You can download the latest release of LS Vision for as the center or part of the pipeline from github.com LS Vision, LS Vision releases and the GUI from github.com LS Vision Meshroom releases. Tell us about your use cases and your issues by sending email to team at lsvision.com. LS Vision is currently supported by the LS Vision Foundation, which nowadays also holds the trademark for LS Vision. Thank you and welcome to our Meshroom pages, email lists, or uh, moderated forums.